Hello everyone, my name is Abraham from Growat. Today I'm going to show you how to install SPH UP type, uh, our hybrid inverter from Growat. So this is what's included in the package when you unpack it from the box. So here you've got the inverter. You also have the cardboard installation guide and here you have the user manual and also the warranty. And here is the equipment that also is also included. So here you have the EPS output port, you have the AC grid connector, this is the MC4 connector kit that's also used to connect the PV to the inverter. And here you have the CT clamp and the CT cable, this is the CT extension cable, and lastly you have the waterproof cover for the inverter. Now I'm going to explain the ports on the underside of the inverter. So from the left we have the PV switch and these are the PV connection ports. You have two strings that can be connected to one inverter. So on the top side you have the positive terminals and on the bottom you have the negative terminals. Next we have the EPS, EPS port which is the emergency power supply and the next uh, which is marked grid is where you connect the connection to the AC grid and here we have the USB connection which you can use for a local firmware update and also to connect the data logger and here we have the connection ports first we have the CT and the meter port so where you have uh, the CT clamp or when you have the smart meter you can connect it to this port next is the CAN port where you connect Growatt's lithium battery and then below we have the DRM which is only used for the Australian and the New Zealand market and the NTC port which is used for connection to lead acid batteries and 4851 and also 4852 we use these ports to connect to other inverters in parallel and lastly we have the PPP connection ports and here we have the battery terminal, the positive on the left side and the negative terminal on the right side. Okay, now I'm going to show you how to connect the PV connection to the inverter. So we have the source of PV electricity here. So you just connect it to the corresponding terminals, so positive and negative. And then you can also connect the grid. Uh, you can see this is the grid port connection. You can just connect it by aligning the three holes on the inverter with the three holes on the port, like so. And just plug it in. This is the Shine Wi-Fi X model, which is the model that is compatible with the UP model. Please check if your data logger is actually Shine Wi-Fi X when connecting to the inverter because there is a similar one that is the RF stick for the connection to Shine Link and but and that's a different component entirely. So please make sure that the one you're connecting is the correct one. So to connect the data logger, please make sure that the triangle arrow here is facing you and is at the front of the data logger. And then you can just connect it, the USB to the USB port in the inverter, like so. So as you can see, the arrow is still uh, facing upwards and then you can just twist it until it is firmly connected to the inverter. Waterproof cover for the terminal connection and the battery connection. So you can see there's the seven hole part and the two hole part. So the two holes is ba basically just means this is for the cables that will lead to the battery terminals. And this is for the cables that will lead to the connection ports here. So in this video, I'm just going to show you um, the case that we're going to connect it to the CT and the can because we're going to connect this to the grid and also to a battery, a grow up battery. So 
first you just dismantle the waterproof cover so you will have the tightening screws and the waterproof rubbers here so these are the CT wire and this is the CAN cable which will connect to the PCS port in the battery with which we will show later so you can just put in the tightening screws and then put it inside the 7 hole part and then you can connect these to the corresponding ports so this is the CAN and this is the CT and then you can tighten the tightening screws and for the two holes this is to accommodate the wires that will connect it to the battery okay so for the battery terminals you can connect it through the two hole part of the waterproof cover similar to the way you connect it to the seven hole part so you just thread it through the tightening screw and here you have the orange cable for the positive terminal and the black cable for the negative terminal so basically you just screw it in place first the positive terminal next one is the negative terminal After you've made sure that everything is in its place and connected firmly, you can um, screw the waterproof cover in place in the corresponding screw holes there and your connection to the inverter is basically finished. We are going to connect that battery, to the, the inverter to this battery which is the GBLI6532 from Growat and as you can see from this side of the we have the specification label the model number is GBLI6532 and this battery has the nominal capacity of 6.5 kilowatt hours now I'm going to show you the connection ports of this battery which we will use to connect this battery to the inverter so on this side we have the power button and then this is the positive terminal of the battery this is the negative terminal of the battery and we have three ports uh, of connection so the first one is, is the PCS port this one is used to connect the battery to the inverter so you connect a cable from this PCS port to the CAN port in the inverter and we have these two link in and link out port so you use these to connect this battery to another battery so for example if you want to use a multiple battery you can connect this battery to the inverter and then connect it to the second battery using the link out port you can connect the cable from this link out port to the second battery's link in which the in Later on in the video, we will show you the details how to do it correctly. So from the inverter, you have three cables that we will connect to the battery. First is the CAM cable. So this is the one that will connect the inverter to the battery. As you can see here, it is connected to the CAM port of the inverter. and can connect this to the PCS port on the battery. Okay. 
and next we have the positive cable and the negative cable so just connect it to the corresponding terminals on the battery positive and negative so for this first case I'm going to show you how to connect the inverter to the battery if we are just using a single battery in this case please make sure that the link in and link out port are both plugged with the crystal head plugs that is included in the battery package so just plug the link in port and the link out port so this is the complete uh, connection of the battery to the inverter so if you want to connect uh, multiple batteries you would need to purchase the power cables that looks like this so we have here the T cables which you can connect to two batteries so the feature of these cables you have the positive here and the negative here both of them have the terminals that will connect to the inverters so you can connect this part to the inverter as I have shown you with the single battery and the difference is this branches out to two terminals so two positive terminals and also two negative terminals that you can use for um, two batteries installation now I'm going to show you how to connect two or more batteries to one inverter so the main difference between connecting one battery to one inverter is you use the link in and link out port to connect one battery to the other so in connecting a single battery before you plug in both the link in and link out with the crystal heads like so and then connect it to the battery but in this case because we're not using just one battery we use the link in and link out port to connect both batteries to work together so you first designate the master and the slave battery by plugging in the cable from the CAN port of the inverter to the PCS port of your designated master battery. So in this case, I'm just going to plug, in, plug it into this one, as you can see, to the PCS port of the master battery. This comes from the CAN port of the inverter. Next, you connect the master battery to the slave battery by connecting them using a connector cable both with the RJ45 heads so the most important part here is you need to pay attention to the link out and link in of the batteries so you connect the link out of the master battery to the link in of the slave battery please make sure that this is the connection that you make from the master to the slave battery and not the other way around because it won't work as designated and for the remaining link in and link out ports you can just plug that in with the crystal head plugs like so so plug in the link in of the master battery and plug in the link out of the slave battery that way you seal the connection between the two batteries and now we can just plug in the positive terminal to the first battery and this is the negative terminal and do the same with the other battery and you don't need to connect anything to the sec to the PCS port of the slave battery and just close it and leave it be and this is the final and correct connection of the use of multiple batteries to one inverter. Okay, now uh, I'm going to show you uh, how to turn on the inverter and the battery. So you just basically turn on the AC and DC isolators. And you also turn on the PV switch on the inverter. And lastly, you just 
turn on the master battery because they are already connected so you just need to turn on the master battery and as you can see from the LED lights the master battery is turned on and the slave battery is also turned on just by uh, pressing the turn on button on the master battery and to see if you have done the connections correctly you can check from the display on the inverter now it's still at the checking state after the standby state and if after the checking uh, it says normal then you have done all the connections correctly and you can use the inverter as intended so now it shows normal and from the arrows on the display you can also see that the PV is sending power to the inverter and the inverter is sending power to the grid the battery is now uh, is still in its balancing mode but when after a couple of minutes it will show the state of charge and it will charge or discharge according to your setting and that's how you know you've done your connections correctly okay now I'm going to show you how to install the CT clamp properly so this is a CT clamp you open it from this side and please make sure that all the magnets are present inside the CT clamp before you do an installation and as you can see here in the groove there's an arrow sign so this arrow should point in the direction from the grid to the load so the grid is on this side and the load is on this side so the CT clamp is installed between the grid and the load and so you put the live wire or live cable in the groove like so and then you just clamp the CT clamp on the live wire and please make sure that the installation is upright like this so the live wire should be in the vertical direction otherwise the signal might be affected and that's how you install the CT clamp correctly